Chris and Cielo here, and welcome to our channel, and welcome to this week's reading vlog. So Polarathon is now over, which means I no longer have to adhere to my S rule, because my prompt for uh, Polarathon is to read a book with an S on the cover, and so I was only choosing books with S's on the cover, and I no longer have to do that. Although, interestingly enough, uh, the first book I planned to pick up that I'm not already in the midst of happens to have an S on the cover. So, in the middle of... Uh, Maya and the Return of the Godlings. I'm on page uh, 213 and I'm really enjoying this one. This follows Maya, whose father goes missing in the first book and in her quest to go after him and find him, she finds out that there is another world with godly beings and magic and it's called the dark and she has to venture into the dark with her friends to go rescue him. I really enjoyed book one and I'm definitely enjoying book two. This feels like it's going to get four and a half stars. I don't think it's going to get a five star, but I'm willing to be proven wrong. I am very invested in the story. This has flown by and the audiobook is superb. So if you have access to the audiobook for this, I would highly recommend it because it really immerses you in the world because there's like sound effects and some of the voices are different and it's just, it's really been a fun time. And then the other book I plan to read this week, unfortunately, is A Crown of Swords. And I say unfortunately because I spent a week last month reading book six in the last bit of book five. So I was hoping to go all of February without reading a Wheel of Time book. Unfortunately, my audiobook for book seven and book eight came in. So I pushed back book eight um, and asked them to deliver it later. And I think I set March 1st as the date, so I don't have to read that until next month. And decided to get this one over with now so that I wasn't trying to juggle two Wheel of Time books at the same time while having the audiobooks. So yeah, this is going to be the goal for this week. It's about a 30 hour audiobook and I would like to finish it this week. So I have to listen to, let's see. Um, so one hour a day, because I listen to it at three times speed, um, would bring me at seven hours and that would leave me three hours left. So a little under an hour and a half every day to finish this book this week. I mean, I suppose if it had to go eight days, that would be fine. But I have another chunky adult fantasy on my TBR, and that book is on that sucker. So I don't want to be reading them at the same time. It's Red Country by Joe Abercrombie. And I know if I read them at the same time, I will get confused and really burn myself out on adult fantasy. I can read adult fantasies back to back, but I have done it before where I was reading multiple adult fantasies at the same time, and I would legitimately confuse them and get frustrated because I couldn't remember what was going on, and then I would get burnt out because I wanted something lighter, but I was reading two adult fantasies, and like, yeah, so I'm not going to do that this time. Although I will say this isn't going to be as bad as the time I was in a adult high fantasy kick. And I listened to three adult fantasies back to back to back. And I believe it might have been Wheel of Time. Maybe. It was definitely the Dandelion Dynasty. And maybe the Faithful and the Fallen. But it was three of them. And they were all voiced by the same voice actor. You want to talk about confusing. Legitimately sitting there. And all of a sudden going, wait, what is that character doing in this book? And then realizing that the reason you thought that that character was in the wrong book was because you had confused which book you were reading. He's a great voice actor, but listening to three books back to back to back that were adult high fantasy that were voiced by the same person meant that they would blend together a little bit because they sounded like the same person. Ooh, it could have also been a Robin Hobb book because I was listening to those at the time. It might've been Robin Hobb because I don't think I had started Wheel of Time yet. So it might've been Robin Hobb, um, the Dandelion Dynasty and um, the Faithful and the Fallen. Although it could have also been the Lycanus trilogy. I listened to a lot of adult fantasy last year, but it was really, really hard when I was listening to them back to back to back like that. And it was the same voice narrator because let me tell you, I would never do that again ever. I would, I would break it up. I would listen to any other book in between, probably more than one, because that was rough because it definitely meant 
if I was not concentrating, I would forget which book I was reading. So yeah, um, <laughs> bringing me back to this, which had nothing to do with that story. Um, I'm going to try to listen to this this week so I can have like maybe eight ish days, nine ish days to listen to this adult fantasy. And that would give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh yeah. Nine. Wow. Yeah. So I could probably do nine days and listen to just about an hour if I wanted to, because that would give me another nine days to listen to the other adult fantasy. And then I've split them up, but we'll see what I end up doing. This is definitely the priority this week, just because I have the audiobook. Other than that, I think I will stick with middle grade or lighter books. I do have Mox, um, which I'm very, very excited for because John Moxley is one of my favorite wrestlers. Uh, he is right there um, back when he was Dean Ambrose in WWE, but now he's John Moxley, which was his pre-WWE ring name and his post-WWE ring name now that he's in AEW and New Japan and the Indies and all that. And at this time, he was my favorite wrestler pre-AEW, but now there's some people in AEW that are on par with him. And it all depends on my mood and like what storyline they're in as to which one of them is my favorite on any given day. So yeah, I have his autobiography. I've had it and I've been waiting to listen to it because my friend was supposed to listen to it and she is a much slower reader than I am so I agreed with her and said okay I've pre-ordered it I'm going to be getting it when it comes out but you read it and then I will read it because I knew if I knew stuff I would accidentally spoil her without meaning to because we'd be talking about Mox and I would just probably accidentally blurt out something that I knew was fact about Mox without thinking about the fact that the place I got it was the book so we had agreed that if I read it first, we couldn't talk until she had read the book. Because we didn't want to accidentally end up in a conversation about Moxley and me spoil something. So I waited for her and she just never read it. <laughs> I think she started it, but she hasn't finished it. And I'm like, there are audiobooks. He'll read it to you. You can listen to John read his story to you. Which is what I plan to do on normal speed. So it'll take me about nine hours. Well, I'm going to try to listen to it at normal speed. I struggle with that. But it's also John and I'm used to listening to John talk at normal speed. So maybe it'll be all right. But I might save that for my birthday. Because that could be a fun way to spend my birthday is listening to one of my favorite wrestlers read his autobiography to me. So we'll, we'll see. Um, otherwise, I do have some middle grade. I have Aliana, um, the girl of dragons or the girl in the dragons or the girl on the dragons or something like that, um, which is the prequel to the Eva Evergreen series. And that's middle grade. And I know that's on my TBR. I have, uh, what's it called? A friendly town. I can't read that from here. The angle is all wrong. It's covered in shadows. Uh, the friendly town that's almost always by the ocean which is a middle grade and is my um, buzzword-a-thon pick. And I can tell you that the cats have been on the top of this one. Can you see? They hurt the book. Because I had them, I have a bookcase in the hallway and they climb on it and they have claws. Actually, this might've been a nuggy thing. She was sharpening her claws on my books. So I now have pillowcases on top of my books in the hallway to deter cats from using them as, as a scratching post. So I have this one, and that would be a really quick read. I have uh, Journey's End, which is the last book in the Last Dogs series. I have a couple of the Magic Misfits books, though I don't think they're on my TBR. Oh, I have Great Cat Tales, which I'm really excited to get to as lowest rated. Um, yeah, so I have, I have some options. I think Hollowthorn is on my TBR which is also in middle grade. I have some cat and gamer books for my cat lady readathon. I have a couple of warriors books for my cat lady readathon. So I've got some options. So yeah, definitely a lot of stuff that will break up uh, reading this and might make this feel a little less uh, intense. At some point, I need to get back to the three books I'm in the middle of, which are Defiant, which I put down, realized I wasn't in the mood for, and decided to see if I could put it off until I was. So hopefully uh, I'll get there sooner rather than later because I was really enjoying that. And I feel like I broke out of a slump during Polarathon. So maybe this is the week I pick it back up. I have uh, Tales of Ancient Egypt, which I keep forgetting about because it is currently between my bed and my desk and the bed 
and the dust gap is about that big. So I keep forgetting that it's down there and I have to grab it. And then um, 15 Secrets to Survival, which I wasn't necessarily enjoying, but it could have just been a headspace thing. And I at least want to give it a little bit more to see if it hooks me. So we'll see what I get up to. I have all sorts of options. And the good news is, is there's no football this week. So there will be no loud games, no distractions from games. The bad news is, is that next week starts preseason baseball. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see, I like baseball. I have a team in baseball. I do not in football. I am an equal opportunity cheer. I root for whoever uh, interests me in any given year. When I was a kid, I was a diehard Jets and Giants fan. And that was more because my parents were Jets and Giants fans. And then as I got older, I realized I did not like football as much as I liked baseball. And then I fell out of love with baseball for a while, even though I was still a diehard Cubs fan. Like, I sobbed after they won the World Series. So, like, I still do like baseball. And I definitely like it more now with the new rules because it feels less slow. But I also struggle to focus on anything for that long. Like, even reading... I'm usually farting around on my phone or something. So, like, I struggle to focus on anything for that length of time. So, I do definitely like the Cubs. And I'm definitely a, a diehard Cubs fan in the aspect of, if you are facing the Cubs, I am rooting for the Cubs. But I'm also somebody who gets really into players. Which I figured out in my teenage years because I was brought up a Cubs and a Red Sox fan. And I was always more Team Cubs than Team Red Sox. And then um, my friend, the one that was supposed to read the Mox books, um, is a diehard Yankees fan. And I started to pay attention to the Yankees a little bit more, even though I was a Boston fan. Um, because we would occasionally talk baseball, but more in a, um, very careful, let's not get into a fight over Boston Yankees. And I realized what an amazing player Derek Jeter was and what a good person he seemed like. And so I got really attached to Jeter. So there was a period of time there where my favorite National League team was the Cubs. My favorite American League team was the Red Sox. And my favorite player was Derek Jeter, which really doesn't jive with the American League thing because the Red Sox and the Yankees hate each other. Um, which, as my friend pointed out, uh, meant that I was not a true Red Sox fan because a true Red Sox fan would not like a Yankees player and have that as their favorite player. And I went, well, at the end of the day, they can both lose because I'm Team Cubs. And that was when I realized I was really mainly a Cubs fan. And to this day, I still get attached to baseball players. There are several players that were on the um, winning team in the World Series for the Cubs that I'm still massively attached to. I watched Judge with his home runs and got really attached to him um, because he gives me Derek Jeter vibes in the way he presents himself and the way he plays the game. He just seems like a really respectable, honorable, decent dude um, on top of being a really, really good ball player. I have really gotten into the Phillies the last few years because I've gotten exposed to their fandom a little bit. And their fandom gives me a lot of uh, Cubs fandom vibes. And that is one of the fun things about the Cubs fandom is that even when we sucked, we were still diehard Cubs fans. And there was a moment last season, I think this was when I decided I really liked the Phillies fandom, when um, I think it was Trey Turner was slumping. And instead of being jerks to him, they gave him a standing ovation and cheered him on. And that game, not at that at bat, I don't think, but at that game, he ended up breaking his slump. And I was like, that was the exact opposite of the way Yankee fans had treated some of their players. And I was like, oh, well, I like this. I like the fact that you realize that they're like human and they go through slumps and they're not going to be perfect all the time. And it just really kind of gave me the right vibes. So the last few years I've been rooting for the Phillies once the Cubs were eliminated. So I got attached to the fandom. And of course, the Phillies have Kyle Schwarber, who was on the winning team for the Cubs, and I really, really like Schwarber. So I have found myself doing that a little bit with football. Last year, I was a diehard Eagles fan for the Super Bowl. I wanted the Eagles to win so bad. I was so disappointed when the Eagles lost because I had gotten really attached to Jason Kelsey. 
And then this year I swung into uh, liking both Jason and Travis and wanting to see a rematch from last year. And so I was obviously team Kansas City this year because I was rooting for Travis Kelsey to win another Super Bowl. Plus, I've always really enjoyed l watching Patrick Mahomes. I like um, his play style of the fact that you can't trust him not to run down half the field. I like other players for the same reasons. I like ones that really draw me in and make me want to watch them play. So I got invested and it was horrible horrible tonight because I cared. I cared who won. I wanted the Chiefs to win and I cared who won. So yeah, there was a little bit of anxiety tonight. Not gonna lie because the game was really, really close. But yeah, I've realized I have now been rambling on for a while because this is a 17 minute intro clip and I didn't finish any books before I started this. So I'm gonna go and um, editing Chris, I promise you, will be cursing me for the fact that I made this as long as it is. And I'm going to see what kind of books I can get up to, and I will check back in with you when I have an update. checked in at all this week because it has been a very very bad brain week I have been struggling my birthday is Friday and it is really starting to sink in like the reality of the fact that I'm not going to get a card from my gram that she's not out there in the world existing like I wouldn't have seen her because she was living in Pennsylvania right near the Jersey border and I live in New York and there was just no way she was in any shape to drive to where I am in New York. And because of my OCD, like, it would be like a four-ish hour drive down and a four-ish hour drive back. And then whatever time I'm spending with her and the entire time I was gone, I wouldn't be able to use the bathroom. So I wasn't going to be going to her either. Also, we have a, I want to say a Jeep Liberty. And I get extremely car sick in it. We had had a car and a Jeep. The car died. Well, not died, but like it wasn't worth fixing. Like the, the frame was rusting out. And so we had gotten rid of the car because with the pandemic, my mom retired. My dad wasn't working. We weren't really going anywhere. We didn't really need two cars. And we only had a Jeep. I found out very, very quickly that the Jeep made me car sick, and our mechanic said there are some people, because of the way Jeeps ride, that get car sick when they ride in Jeeps. Hi, I'm one of them. And I uh, cannot see things at a distance without them being blurry, and I don't have glasses anymore because my glasses broke. And I was getting ready, um, literally, like the week everything shut down, I was supposed to have an appointment with the eye doctor to update my prescription and get new glasses. And obviously that has had not happened. And with the pandemic, I haven't been comfortable with the idea of having somebody that close to my face and sticking my face in the apparatus that you would need to use. And I just haven't gotten them redone. So you combine being in a vehicle that makes me inherently sick with things at a distance being blurry. There was no way I was driving four hours. It just was not a thing that was possible because I would have just gotten sick and that would have been no bueno. So I, I wasn't going to see her. I was actually hoping that maybe we could find some way to meet up this summer when the weather was nice and see if she was in good enough shape for them to somehow finagle something there. But obviously that was not meant to be. I, um, yeah. I've just really been struggling this week with all of that. And 
it, it's not it's not been a fun time. I haven't really wanted to be on camera. I know I need to film, but I haven't wanted to. I finally got a vlog edited, so I did spend some time watching my own face, which is a whole nother can of worms. And uh, I, I read. So I'm going to run you through what I read this week. And again, I'm going to thank you all for continuing to be patient with me as things are a bit patchy while I uh, try to... Uh, deal with things and manage my mental health and my spoons as best I can. One thing I want to mention, and I don't know if I've already mentioned it, so if I have, uh, oops, is I got book mail and I was not expecting it. And, uh, I wanted to let, uh, y'all know I now have Fireborn, which is really funny because I had put this on my TBR for middle grade March, not specifically, but like in January, I had this title brought up to me again and went, oh, that'd be perfect for middle grade March. So I put it on my March TBR because one of my goals was to be more specific and not necessarily put a book on my TBR the moment I saw it and went, ooh, that sounds good. But me be going, okay, I'll read that in October or I'll read that in July or whatever. So I picked this for March because it's a middle grade and I thought it would be perfect for middle grade March. And then one of you all got it for me. So I got a gift note. It says, happy birthday. I'm so sorry for your recent loss, but I hope you can still enjoy your birthday from Oz. So thank you so much, Oz. This definitely put a smile on my face and your timing was perfect. Since I am going to spoil you all now, this did end up on my middle grade March TBR. So it worked out absolutely perfectly. And I'm very, very excited to read this and give it a go in the month of March. So thank you again, Oz, for making it a little bit easier for me to get to this one. Now on to what I've read. So first I finished Maya and the Return of the Godlings. I think I was partway through this when this vlog started and I ended up giving it four and a half stars. I really enjoyed the second book in this series. I definitely enjoyed it more than book one and it very much laid out the trajectory of what we're going to see in book three while still leaving a lot of questions to be answered, but you kind of know where the story's going, and I really, really like that. There were definitely some twists at the end that make me less certain of how things are going to play out, and very curious to see how the twists at the end are going to impact Maya's journey in book three. I think book three could absolutely have the potential to get five stars, and I'm hoping to get to it next month, so we'll see if I can manage that, but I really, really like this and seeing the journey that Maya and her friends went on in this one and how they kind of handled the surprising things that were thrown in their way. So very much looking forward to finishing this, hopefully sooner rather than later. Then I read Fiddling with Fate, and this is the third book in the Southern Homebrew Mystery Series, and I gave this 3.75 stars, and this we're following Hattie, yes, who owns a moonshine shack, and sells moonshine, and her grandfather, who is an absolute character, uh, helps out. He lives in, like, a retirement home, like, nursing home kind of situation, and she goes and picks him up and brings him to work with her. And in this one, she hires a band, the Bootlegging Brothers. They're a popular bluegrass band, and she has them uh, record a jingle for her. She is also providing drinks at an event they're going to be playing at, and one of them ends up dead. And once again, Hattie's moonshine is tied to the murder, so she gets involved and has to investigate. I think I like the other two more than this one. I wasn't quite as invested in this one as I was the first two. I will say I never suspected who did it. Like, they were never somebody I was seriously considering a suspect, so I thought that aspect was interesting. I still absolutely love her grandfather and he still very much reminds me of my own grandfather and I will always enjoy reading these books I think for that aspect because it's like a little bit of uh, nostalgia and maybe this wasn't the best month to read it because I'm missing my gram which makes me miss my grandfather and then reading this I think it might have kicked up a little bit of an emotion there so that could have also played into my mood while I was reading this, but I still thought it was a decent addition to the series. It just wasn't my favorite. Then two books that got 4.5 stars and I absolutely loved are uh, Cat and Gamer Volume 2 and Volume 3. 
these follow a uh, gamer named Rico who is really, really into work. And she clocks out on time every day because she wants to be able to go home and game. She doesn't want to have to work overtime. And she never says yes to any of her coworkers or boss, like, do you want to get a drink or something like that after work? One day, a kitten is found in the parking lot. For whatever reason, uh, Rico decides she's going to take the kitten in. And she goes through life with this kitten and kind of applies uh, gamer logic as into how to raise a kitten. And I think these are just really, really cute bongas. They're absolutely adorable. I love the kitten. I love seeing Rico learn more about raising a cat and the bond that you form with a cat. I love how she equates gaming and game situations to her cat. And I love that we get little scenes every once in a while from the cat's point of view. So we'll see it from Rico's point of view, but then we'll get to see what the cat was thinking. And I love that as well. These are just amazing little mangas. They're super cute, super quick, and I absolutely adore them. And they were really great because they were on my Cat Lady Readathon TBR. So more cat books to read is always a good thing in my book. Also, if you're wondering where my little helper is, I have shut her out because I'm planning on filming my phase out your TBR announcement for phase three. And I did not want her help for that. So she will not be present for this video, but I'm sure she will be in future ones as she loves gracing you with her presence. Then after that, I read a friendly town that's almost always by the ocean. And I gave this three and a half stars. So this reminds me of the Wayside School books. And in this book, we're following Davy. And he and his mom moved to Topsy after the death of his father. And Topsy is a little different. Like coves are bottomless and the pier has no end in sight. There's a high tide and a low tide and a vanishing tide. Dogs are a myth, but mermaids are completely real. And whatever you do, don't make eye contact with the rubber dogs. So I read that from the description, but there's a lot of different little uh, quirks like that. And it reminds me of Wayside School with like the school was built and it's 30 stories tall because there's 30 classrooms. And instead of being built horizontal, it was built vertical and there is no 13th floor, even though there has to be a 13th floor. And each of the kids has their own personality and quirk. And we see that play out in those books. And this felt kind of the same way where each of the kids had a bit of a quirk. And this town was really quirky. And all of the people in it were really quirky. And Davey was a bit of a outlier because he came in from the outside and is trying to figure this out. A lot of the book is from Davey's point of view, but we do occasionally see POVs from various classmates he has in school. And I, I liked it. I think it would have gotten five stars easily for me as a kid because I really, really love the Wayside School books. So this is something that would have been up my alley, but as an adult and somebody who has very fond memories of Wayside, it reminded me of it, but it didn't live up to it, if that makes sense. So... I think three and a half is fair. I definitely want to read the sequel and see what happens in that because I think it's, it's a fun concept and they're really easy to read and they're quick books. And I just, I, I really did uh, quickly move through this. So I definitely can see me reading the sequel in the future because I had a fun time with it. It just wasn't a new fave or anything. Something that was a new fave is A Journey's End. And I gave this five stars. <laughs> This is the final book in the Last Dog series, and it is brilliant. It does a masterful job of wrapping up the dog's journey, as in this book we're following three dogs, Max, Rocky, and Gizmo, and our main character is Max, and all of the humans have disappeared, and he wants to go find his humans because he misses the kids who were his companions. And he meets Rocky and Gizmo along the way, and they go with him because they want to help him find his people and find the humans and figure out what is going on. And we've seen this sprawling journey over three books. And this is the end. We're finally going to get to see them find out what happened to the humans once and for all. And hopefully be reunited with them. And I just really, really loved how it wrapped up. It did everything I wanted it to do and then some. It wrapped up pretty much every loose thread I could think of. And that was really, really exciting because... I always worry when I get invested in a book like this if all of the threads are going to be wrapped up or if there's still going to be a question or two at the end. And I think this book did a great job of kind of answering all of the questions you could have had. I can't think of any. 
And I just really love how the story kind of came together and seeing that final bit of the journey and not quite knowing what was going to happen, but being invested in their journey every step of the way and knowing that it had to lead to the humans, but not quite sure how they were going to get there, if they were going to make it, and if they were actually going to be reunited. So I love this. I love this series. It is definitely a new favorite series of mine. And if you like animal POVs, if you like reading about dogs, this is an amazing, amazing series. And let me find one. Every once in a while, you'll get a full page illustration, which I definitely think adds to the story. So highly recommend this series. Highly recommend this book. Fantastic series under. Then I finished A Crown of Swords. I did not expect to finish this this week. I thought it would take me a little bit into next week, but I busted out the uh, last four, well, last 12 hours of the audiobook today. It took me four hours to listen to, and I was not expecting that. I started reading this last night before bed and smashed out half of the pages I had left before I fell asleep. So the end of this book really, really picked up, and... This series follows a lot of different characters with the idea that one of them is the Dragon Reborn, and the Dragon Reborn is going to have a major effect on how the world plays out. And we're following a bunch of characters that are associated with him on both sides of kind of the conflict, because you have the people that oppose him and the people that are on his side. And there's a lot of things going on and a lot of characters to keep track of, and it's very, very hard for me to explain what this series is. It's probably just better if you go and read about it or maybe maybe check out a channel because a bunch of people are doing Wheel of Time Along um, that can explain it better than I can. But I, at this point, have no idea how to describe it without spoiling stuff I know. So I'm trying to keep it vague. But it's like also really, really complicated because there's so much going on. And like I said, you follow so many different POVs throughout the series. And I've just really gotten into the last two books. It's definitely picked up for me. So I'm hoping that the next book, which I believe is book eight, will continue that because I should be getting the audiobook very early into March. So we'll see how that goes. But I definitely enjoyed this and had a fun time with it. And like I said, it really picked up at the end. And then the last book I finished this week is Aliana, Girl of Dragons. And I gave this 4.25 stars. So this is a prequel to the Eva Evergreen series. And this started off a little slow for me. I was trying to remember like Eva's story and the characters we met in Eva's story because it's been a while since I've read either of her books and trying to see how many names I recognized and it was a lot harder than I had expected it to be. So it might have been better if I had read this closer to the uh, first book. Well, the first two, because there's only two. But this follows Aliana and her mom died when she was a baby or really, really young. And then her dad got remarried and he ends up dying. And she's living with her stepmother and her step siblings and is treated like a servant. Stop me if this sounds familiar. So this is very similar to the Cinderella concept of... Girl loses her parents, ends up with a stepmother and step siblings that kind of treat her like dirt. In this one, though, the stepmother's mother in law lives with them and really, really loves Aliana. And the relationship is definitely a mutual love fest. And so she at least has the solace of that. And things are kind of rough for her despite that one little bright patch in the grandmother her grandmother, the mother's, stepmother's uh, mother-in-law. And then she meets two very different beings. One, a young night dragon, and night dragons are the stuff of legends, and they're supposed to be really dangerous, but she ends up befriending this night dragon, and a witch named Nella, who is going to completely turn her life upside down. Because there's an abyss, and... There is a tear in the abyss and Nella ends up going to Aliana for help. As Aliana seems to know the abyss better than Nella does. And so Aliana has to decide if she's going to help Nella and risk her stepmother's wrath. So it started off a little slow for me because it was essentially me trying to place any of the characters I met and try to remember if I knew them from Eva Evergreen. 
And the second part was the fact that it was a Cinderella retelling and I wasn't expecting that. So that kind of threw me in the beginning. But once I got into it, I really, really flew through it. And I really liked Eliana and getting to see her dealing with the treatment of her step family. Both good and bad because obviously her step grandmother-in-law-ish, sort of. Um, however you want to look at the uh, stepmom's mother-in-law, who is like a grandmother to her. Uh, so she had a good relationship there and then obviously a bad relationship with the stepmother and stuff. So it was interesting having that dynamic. The fact that they're staying at an inn and seeing the different like travelers come in and the little glimpses we get of that, which gives you an idea of the outside world. I liked her friend, uh, Isao. It's I-S-A-O, Isao. Um... He is a pretty solid bestie, even if she can't see him very often. And then, obviously, I like the relationship that develops between Aliana and the dragon and then Aliana and the witch that she meets in Nella. So I definitely started getting into it once we got a little further into the story and got away from just the feeling like I was reading a retelling of Cinderella. And by the end, I was completely hooked. It makes me want to reread the Eva Evergreen series and reread those two books. Well, this is all still fresh in my head. So if they pop up on a TBR, don't be surprised. I just really enjoyed the journey Eliana went on once I got over the beginning and definitely am glad that I, I picked up this book and gave it a shot because I knew it existed and I just, I don't know why I didn't pick it up sooner. So there you have it. That's my week. Not a bad week given that I was not having a great brain week but I'm pretty happy with my reading I'm hoping I can get some editing done so you might actually you know see this before June that would be nice if I could get this sucker out before the end of February I would be happy so we'll see how I do anyways I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here because it is a very long clip and I think I rambled in the intro clip and editing me is going to hate me for that because I don't like editing <laughs> so uh I don't always like it when I ramble like, as editing me. Chatty Crest with you guys right now uh, loves the chatty bits, but editing me, not so much. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this vlog up here so that editing Chris can have a break. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me dragon emojis in honor of Aliana, girl of dragons. Like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!